What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, stored cross-site scripting into on-click event with angle brackets and double quotes HTML encoded and single quotes and backslash escaped. So we can see straight away there is some protection against certain types of injection attack. We need to find a way around this. Without further ado, let's fire up the lab. So the idea here is that it's a blog. We have the ability to comment on blog posts. We can leave certain types of extra information alongside our blog comments. So we have a blog comment here. We have a name. We can provide an email address. But the interesting part of this form is that we can also provide a website. So let's do that. Let's click post comment. Let's just get a feel for the basic functionality of this. So we'll head back to the blog. We can see the comment that we've left and notice there is a hyperlink above the author name. Let's just inspect that. And we can see that the URL we provided is reflected in a couple of different locations in the DOM. So first of all, as part of that anchor tag, we can see the href attribute is the provided URL, but also notice that it appears inside some JavaScript here. So we're calling the tracker.track function and the argument that's passed to that is the URL. Now we already have a few different possible attack vectors. So we can try and inject into either of these two locations. For example, we could use a double quote to try and break out of this href attribute and specify our own attribute. Another thing we could try to do is to inject script tags and open some JavaScript and then call the alert function. Another thing we could try and do is use a single quote to break out of the JavaScript string that's being passed to the tracker.track function. And we could actually call the tracker.track function on something like our URL and then concatenate to that or subtract from that the alert function. But there's a problem with all of these attack vectors and we will just try one as an example. Problem is in the lab description. So we've spoken about using angle brackets, but those are going to be HTML encoded. Double quotes, also going to be HTML encoded. What about single quotes? They're going to be escaped. So unfortunately, none of these attacks are going to succeed. And that's because the page is successfully dealing with these special characters. Now let's just take one of those attacks just so we can see how it fails. Let's assume we're trying to break out of the string that's passed as an argument to the tracker.track function. So we can keep all of the other information the same. So we'll just call this second blog post. The name field is not too important. The email field is not too important as well. Now let's think about the website. So let's do something like evil.com just as an example. What we're then going to do is pass a single quote and the objective here is to terminate the string early, concatenate the alert function, and then let's just concatenate a single quote to that because we obviously want to deal with the trailing single quote that's going to be provided by the server without commenting out the rest of the line, which is not going to work in this case. So let's post this. Let's head back to the page. Let's have a look at our comment and let's inspect the DOM. So take a look at this tracker.track http evil.com. We then have our single quote, but notice it's being escaped by the server. So all of this plus alert is actually part of the string. Notice that second single quote we provided is also escaped. We were unable to break out of the string because our single quotes are being escaped. It's possible to try some of the other methods as well, but we're going to end up with similar results. The page is successfully escaping or encoding special characters. So we're unable to inject into the page. Now, one of the interesting ideas behind the fact that these single quotes are being escaped is that the developer must be manually escaping this string and going through and deliberately placing, for example, a backslash before every single quote or any other special character in the string. But the thing is, there's a fairly good likelihood that the developer has not covered every eventuality. And the eventuality we're going to consider right now is making use of HTML encoded values as our input. So we saw that making use of regular single quotes didn't work because they were escaped on the back end. But what happens if we encode our HTML input? Is the server still going to understand that this is a special character that needs to be sanitized? Let's take a look at how we do that. So once again, we can fill out the rest of the form with arbitrary values. And now let's think carefully about our payload here. So we need to start off with something that looks like a legit URL. And that's simply because there is some front end verification here. Might be different if you are using the proxy here. 
Maybe we don't need to care about the front end verification. And you can see the string that's popped up there is in fact the string we're going to make use of. So we have the ampersand sign. So this usually designates HTML encoding. And a POS with a semicolon is the HTML encoded version of a single quote. We're going to concatenate or subtract in this case alert. Then we're going to add another single quote. Remember, as we saw, we kind of have to absorb that trailing single quote. So everything's still valid in this case. So we're going to have ampersand POS. Let's post a comment. Let's see how the server deals with this. So you can see we get the pop-up. Congratulations, you've solved the lab. Let's head back to the lab for a little bit of post analysis here. So we can see our blog post. Let's inspect the element here. And we're interested in the string that was ultimately passed to tracker.track. Notice that in place of that ampersand apos with a semicolon on the end, so in other words, the HTML encoded version of the single quote, notice that we just get a single quote. It's been HTML decoded by the browser, but keep in mind, this is all happening after that string has been sanitized by the server. So what we can see is the single quote is no longer being escaped because at the time the escape function was run on the string, there was no single quote. There was ampersand apos. So the server was unable to escape the user supplied string here. So we end up with the first part of our URL. We then have a subtract after the string has ended alert, which then calls the function minus an empty string. This is what generates the cross site scripting attack. Now, one final thing to note here is that this only works because it's been posted in HTML context. So we can't really inject HTML encoded values into JavaScript, but we're not technically inside JavaScript. We are writing a JavaScript string inside a JavaScript function, but think about the overall context here. We're actually inside an on-click listener. In other words, this is basically still HTML. Sometimes we write JavaScript inside HTML, but the context here is a HTML context. We're inside the on-click attribute of an anchor tag. And since we are writing HTML, this is why HTML encoded values are going to be replaced by their decoded values, as we can see in this case. Just as a quick demonstration of this, you may sometimes notice, or perhaps you've not realized that there are differences in the DOM, which is what we're seeing here in the inspector, and the raw HTML that's returned from the server. You see, right up until the point where the server dispatches the HTTP response, it doesn't really have any idea what the decoded value of a POS is. It's actually the browser that knows how to deal with HTML encoding values. And it's the browser that's decoded this, which has then created the cross-site scripting vulnerability. If we right click and choose view page source, so we have our comment here, you can see blog post in the paragraph. Notice this part of the HTML. So we have an anchor tag, ID equals author, href equals HTTP double forward slash foo, have the query string, then notice we have ampersand a pos. See, this is the raw HTML that's sent back from the server. Even at the point when the server is sending the HTTP response back to the client, it has no clue or doesn't care about the decoded value of ampersand a pos. It just sends it back in this format. Then the browser interprets the HTML it builds the document object model. And as part of that process, finally, the ampersand of POS gets decoded into a single quote. Problem is that then creates the cross-site scripting vulnerability. All right, hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching, guys.